Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new or relatively new HD speaker set from Sina, and this is to upgrade many of their last version to a few versions behind versions of their comms. The cutoff point is at the old SMH. Now this is a very popular comm and there's nothing wrong with it as far as being a basic Bluetooth transceiver. Most people I ride with are using these, but they are very limited in their firmware. So this is out. If you have this, this video isn't for you. You're going to have to get something modern. And I would suggest just getting the new 50 series because it has these built in. This is to basically make the older versions closer to the new 50 series. It works with all the 20 series. So if you got these, this is a super easy plug-in upgrade. And of course it works with the 30 series. Now this is my daily driver. And the main difference between the 30 and the new 50 are the presence of the upgraded speakers and the 50 uses the 2.0 version of the mesh system for a little bit better connectivity. But I don't care about that because literally nobody I ride with uses mesh. They all use Bluetooth. They primarily all use very inexpensive third party Bluetooths. So I don't even get to use mesh. So I don't even care about it. I use Bluetooth with my 30K and it actually works very well. So I'm just interested primarily for myself. Now I use this 99% of the time to listen to music. That is primarily why I attach this to my helmet, to listen to music. Phone calls, very unimportant, very rare that I ever have to take a call on the bike, but it works very well. And if I have better clarity for that too, even better. Talking to people is probably the least important thing that I use comms for. So if you're like me and you want improved music, this might be for you. Now, I haven't listened to these yet, but they promise to have number one, more volume, and number two, better clarity, number three, more bass. Yay, win, win, win. It should be a very easy upgrade. It's a multi-step. One is simply taking out the old speakers from your helmet, putting these in its place, I don't yet know if they're an exact fit. I wouldn't be surprised if they're a little bit larger, so I may have to do some modifications. Some helmets definitely have larger cutouts than others for the speaker pods. And I don't remember if I had to do mods to this one or not, but I do remember a prior helmet, I had to just do a little trimming inside to get the speakers flush. Some people prefer these to actually stick out from the inside of the helmet and contact your ear and you do get better sound that way, but I, I really don't like that, especially since I use earplugs all the time. I highly recommend everybody that rides use earplugs, not just for safety. These cut the wind noise, it, they are an absolute game changer. Trust me, they are the biggest positive difference you can make to your motorcycling experience. It will extend your comfort level on any kind of trip, it takes the, the headache and the noise out of the equation. And it makes comms and music more intelligible. You hear things a lot easier. Yes, it's quieter. That's why I'd like a little bit more volume, but everything is so much more clear because it takes out, like I said, the noise. So inside here, it should just be a couple speaker pods and the attached wires. Everything is going to plug back in to our base unit. We don't have to do anything with that. Well, we may have to take it off to unplug it. That's gonna depend on your unit. And yeah, I think I do have to do that here. Other than that, it is updating the firmware on your device. And I hadn't touched the firmware on this in probably two years, just didn't have any reason to. So this is simply using your attached cable to a computer. It has to be done through the computer, not the app. Update the firmware, and then you'll have a new option to enable or disable HD speakers. And that's because the drivers in these are different. You've got different impedances for sure, and probably some different voltages going out to them. Now, maybe it's gonna be a little bit reduced battery life too, if it's pushing more watts out to them. I don't know yet, we'll see. There's also an update you need to do in the Sina app on whatever device you're controlling it with. So once you have those things done, that's it. So here's the connection for the new speakers. And yep, it just plugs in, kind of like a USB-C cable. So I'm gonna get to work. First step is to take out the old speakers. This is never fun. <laughs> So 
So it looks like I might not have had to take this mount off. I'll tell you in a second, because it looks like I thought this bracket was actually capturing the plug. I think I just had to undo this one tiny screw here because it looks like underneath it's just a separate little captured cap thing. Let's see. All right, so that comes out with that screw. Let's see if I could have left this on for you. That would definitely make your install a lot easier. And no, I haven't read the instructions. <laughs> yep, okay. So that's all you had to do is that one little screw. You still had to take this off the helmet, but you don't have to pop this completely off. You just have to get access to that screw. All right, easy enough. So the new cable will go in the back just like this. Old speakers come out. So let's check out the size differences here. They are twice as thick. Let's flip it around. Even squishing down the padding, which there isn't much of. Make sure you can see it there. So there is a definite thickness difference. If you were already scraping your ear in your current install, this will definitely add a little bit more. Mine are sunk in, so I don't have to worry about that. Diameter wise, yeah, they're bigger. They're bigger by a few millimeters, so there's gonna be some interesting finagling to get this in. The actual Velcro area is the same, but these stick out past the Velcro area where the old ones are right to the edge. So just a small difference, but it can add up quickly depending on what helmet you're putting it in. First thing I'm gonna do is get these actually fit in place. All right, so my pockets here are big enough that they just pop right back in. Still using the same Velcro sticky part that I already had in there. If you need different ones or replacement, I should say, they do give you two more here in the package. And that's just to stick on your shell or whatever that these speakers mount to. All right, now I'm gonna put the other one on, reroute the cable, plug it back in, and we'll take a listen. Oh, and just a real quick note, if you listen to the FM radio, I don't, so it's not important to me, but if you do, the antenna is the connection over to your right speaker. So what you wanna do is mount it up and over in the pad as much as possible, because you wanna stretch this out as far as you can for best reception. If you don't care like I do, go ahead and just bunch it anywhere you like in your helmet. But this is your FM antenna. And there we go. I verified the fit is good. They still don't contact my ears. Everything is back in the same place. So now what I'm going to do is put in my earplugs, fire it up, see how it compares. Of course, this part will be completely subjective, but all sound is. Okay, so interesting results here. And this is actually pretty useful. So first of all, do you get more volume? Yes, you do. Not a whole lot though. It is noticeable. I think it's definitely worth 39 and change, which is what these things run. I'll put the link down below. It's not a lot, okay? Um, it's about three clicks difference. So if you put it up to max volume, run it down three clicks, that's what the old ones were at. Like I said, it's noticeable. I think it's worth it. It just takes it up that extra notch and I would not want to be without it now that I have it. Now, the interesting thing is the clarity and the difference and the new control you get here called EQ. And I'm gonna tell you right away, there are only two that you're ever going to use. So you go into basic settings and down at the bottom, you see the new toggle for the HD speaker accessory on or off. If you're using them, you definitely turn it on, right? What really sets it apart is the audio equalizer. You now have off, which, which you had before, balance, which you would figure would be pretty good, bass boost, mid boost, and treble boost, which sound like they're self-explanatory. But the only two you're gonna be using is off and treble boost. Balance is absolutely horrible. It sounds completely muffled. It's 
not a base boost, it's a cut of absolutely everything else. You can barely understand lyrics, it's terrible. Bass boost is even worse. It's like they poured all the juice into the bass and everything else came down to the absolute bottom limits. That's all you hear is bass. I mean, it sounds like you've, you've got your hands over your ears trying to listen to a stereo, it's terrible. Mid boost does what it says, it absolutely just cranks up all the mids. It's as if you had the old graphic equalizer and it was a reverse V. That's exactly what it sounds like. Everything sounds like it's in a tin can. It's metallic and hollow and ringy. So if all you're interested in is phone calls, mid boost would probably be very good to you. If you, all you're doing is comms, mid boost would probably do you very well. But for music, treble boost is where it's gonna be at, especially if you're using earplugs. If you don't use earplugs, you're probably gonna prefer off, but treble boost isn't nearly as much as the bass boost or mid boost, it's just a little bit, and it just brings back what it sounds like using earplugs is if you didn't have them. It's perfectly actually balanced in your ears. And that's it. Everything sounds really clean with all of them. Doesn't matter what kind of music I was playing. It didn't have any kind of crackle, which I did have with the old ones. Sometimes if you were playing really loud or really bassy, really hard hitting stuff, you would get a little bit of a breakup. And these aren't doing that. So that's cool. They just sound like regular headphones. And the old ones definitely didn't do that. So if you're using earplugs, try out treble. If you're just using it for comms, use mid boost. Everybody else stick with off. Balance and bass boost, go ahead and try it. You're gonna immediately go, oh yeah, he was right, off. <laughs> so there you go. That's it. Definitely suggested if you have the older comms and you want a simple upgrade to your sound. See you next time.